Hello, Makati. Hello, world. This is Attorney Angel, and I'm your legal angel. Hi, my fellow angels. As always, I hope that you are staying safe, staying well, and staying healthy, and that you are not forgetting to pray. Of course, again, thank you very much for your care and for your support. And thank you very much because we are now um, 754 subscribers. Thank you, thank you very much. So I'm very, very positive that uh, in no time we will reach 800. And then, of course, 1,000. The goal is 1,000, hopefully, by the end of December. Um, let's claim it, okay? Let's ask the Lord, okay, that uh, it will happen. So it will happen in December. If not, um, marami pa namang panahon, okay? So um, share, share the, the word, like, subscribe, share, and follow. Spread the word. And uh, hopefully through your help, we will uh, reach our goal. And we will be able to help more people, educate more people, and um, help more law students and our kababayans all over the world. Now, another day for learning. This time, I will share with you a brief discussion regarding um, part of what I uh, discussed uh, when I was invited to speak um, uh, before uh, the... AUSL Handwriting Advocates. Um, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank uh, Attorney John Renada and the officers and members of AHA for inviting me. Okay, so part of the lecture was about um, Case Digest. Uh, it's about legal writing in the new normal. Okay, um, but um, this part that I will share with you is the last part that I discussed about Case Digest. So I hope you learned from this. Thank you very much. Case Digest. Okay. I will talk to you briefly about Case Digest or Case Briefs, Case Digesting, Case Briefing. So, we'll talk about function, the process, and the steps that can help you in your uh, Case Digest or writing your Case Digest for your subjects. Okay. Keywords. Case and Digest. Okay. So, let's zoom into the two keywords. First, case. Okay. So when you say case, in general, it refers to an action, suit, or controversy. And in particular, uh, focusing on law school or legal studies, we know that here we refer to the decisions of the Supreme Court of the Philippines. And when you say digest, in general, it means a summation or a um, condensation of a body of information and in particular, as I said, for our purposes, um, for the purpose of legal studies and um, for law school, we are talking about the decisions or cases of the Supreme Court or decided by the Supreme Court. Okay. Case digest, put them together, you have here another term for case digest, which is case brief. Okay. So case brief, pwede yan um, also to refer to pleadings that you file in court. But here for purposes for law schooling or legal education, we refer to it as the case brief, which is a dissection of the judicial opinion. Okay? And it contains a written summary of the or the basic components of that particular decision. Okay? Penned by, a, uh, by a, a justice of the Supreme Court or sometimes it's a per curiam decision. So function, I know that you are familiar with the images here. These are um, images from the movie Bar Boys. Okay, so function. Una una hindi lang ito para sa mga law students, aspiring lawyers, also for lawyers na nakakatulong ito. Okay. Case briefing helps you acquire um, skills in uh, analytical thinking and critical thinking. So it helps you acquire the skills of case analysis and legal reasoning. Okay, which we really, really need in our profession. And of course, practically, case briefing aids our memory. It helps us retain information that we need. 
especially to law students, um, kailangan nyo yan. Of course, in answering your recitation, your quizzes, and of course, your midterms and your finals, or sometimes we have pa rin prelims. And of course, the case digest that you compiled, and then you submit at the end of the semester. Okay, so see, here are some steps which I summarized for you that maybe you can adopt, but um, I know that you have your own uh, ways, your own strategies. I, I um, call it the R-I-D-S-A-E. So let's start with the first, um, the R-I-D, or read. Read for R. So read, basahin nyo ang kaso in the full text. But not just read, of course, you have to study and understand. And then, I, you identify. What do you identify? You identify the different parts of the case. Okay. If you need a detailed discussion on the different parts of the case, you can refer to the case of um, um, Jose Velarde, or Mike Velarde versus Social Justice Society. It was discussed there in detail. Okay. And then, B, determine. What do you determine? You determine the relevant facts. Okay. You separate the irrelevant from the relevant, but you need you only need the relevant facts, all right? And then the SAE, letter S, spot. Spot what? Spot the issue, which is very, very important, if not the most important part of your case digesting, of course, aside from the fact. But because in the issue, in spotting the issue, hindi lahat talaga nakaka alam nito at hindi lahat pa nakakakultivate ng skill na ito. You will develop it eventually as you go through life in law school. Spotting the issue. Napaka-importante because it is the heart, the focus, and the crew, C-R-U-X, of the case. Okay? And the, borrowing the words of Attorney Alinurong, he said, it is the point in which the case turns. Okay? So spotting the issue, spot the issue. And of course, in, um, in a case, merong maraming issue. So, depende na lang kung ano yung subject na tinatakil nyo to focus on that issue and spotting that issue. And letter A, answer. Answer the issue because the issue is always answerable by a yes or a no. And then E, explain. Explain how and why the Supreme Court um, reached that decision and why it decided in that way. Okay, the reason of the court, the rash of the court in arriving at its decision. Okay, that's it. But um, for me, i just like to share with you, um, I don't know if it will be useful to you, but for my subjects, in all my subjects, I assign this format, the BCS first format. B-C-S-F-I-R-F. -F. What, um, what does it stand for? B for badge which I always tell my students right there in the badge, the nature of the case and the keywords, all right? Like for example, um, uh, Chaining Choi, the very famous case. So you can um, put there the nature of the case if it is um, about um, the nullity of a marriage and then um, keywords like um, small penis, uh, non-consummated uh, sexual intercourse, etc., etc. Okay? And then, caption. Uh, I'd like my students to put the caption, the title, the citation, whether it be the SPRA or the GR number, the date of the decision, and the ponente. I have a penchant for asking them the ponente kasi Ang gagaling sumulat ng mga Supreme Court Associate Justices natin. But I have my favorites. And alia, isa na doon si Justice Isagan Cruz, okay? And of course, our chairman for the best bar ever, na ang galing talaga na expression of combining plain language, prose, and poetry, and style in his uh, decisions, um, Justice Marvick Leonin. Okay? May certain flavors pag nagsusulat ang mga um, justices natin. And then the syllabus or the syllabi, um, we've been used to, yung mga panahon namin, skara kami, physical copy. Well, um, re um, case reporter ang skara. Pero, makikita nyo, in the first part, meron na may italicized portions before the start of the discussion of the case. And you will see there, 
principles doctrines okay although it is not binding because it's just a summary of the case reporter napaka-useful niya kasi makikita mo na kaagad doon ano yung mga principles of law and doctrines applied by the Supreme Court in a particular case so i like my students and i require my students to put the syllabus syllabi or syllabus in their case digest okay and then of course the facts the facts now sabi ko nga relevant facts and i require them to i um, narrate to put the narrative facts narrate the background and then the procedure of facts so para malaman ko ano nangyari from the lower court going up to the supreme court and then the irf issue of course popping the issue again point of dispute or the point in which the case turns all right and um, dito, pwedeng simulan ng estudyante ng whether or not, or pwede rin if, pwede ganun, if the, if the, um, the petitioner, blah, 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 if the law is the law or ganyan. But I've been used to whether or not, so whether or not na lang din pa napagamit ko. And then, ruling. Ah, here pala sa issue. Kasi, um, I require them na kung ano yung related sa subject namin. Like for example, if ethics yung case na inasign ko and then there are some issues. If ethics and subject and then marami pang issue involved in that, uh, in that case, I would uh, tell them to concentrate on the ethics issue. If start ko naman, ang subject na tinuturo ko, start ko yung issue na pinaka-identify ko. Okay? And then of course the ruling. Okay? The categorical answer first, I would like them to answer whether it is a yes or a no, and then the reason of the court or ratio of the court in deciding in that way. Okay? The reason for the decision, in other words. And last but not the least, pinapalagay ko rin yung falio. Falio, payo, etc. Um, whatever pronunciation you like. But uh, one, I had a former student um, who speaks uh, Spanish, in Portuguese, and double L is um, pronounced as Y, but I, iba yung pilantik ng double L ng pagfalio kaysa sa falio, di ba? So I call it the falio. And in the case of Florentino versus Rivera, sabi, ang falio ay dispositive portion ng case, the final part of the case which finally disposes of the case or the dispositive portion niya. So, Makikita mo na wherefore petition is dismissed, wherefore the case is remanded to the regional trial court, wherefore the decision of the court of appeals is um, reversed or affirmed. So that is the follow the dispositive portion. Okay? So that's it for um, my brief discussion on the case digest or case briefing that I'd like to share with you. Because before I already discussed this, um, in uh, in uh, er, in one of my blogs, and I discussed this together with case synthesis. So I hope um, this supplemented their knowledge on case briefing or case digest. Thank you very much for listening and for watching. Like, subscribe, share, and follow. Be kind, be a blessing to others, and always remember to glorify God with a grateful heart. This is a journey angel, and I'm your legal angel. Bora hey!